knowing how to price a project can make or break your web design or web development business. So in this video, I'll share with you five tips and a bonus one to make sure that you're getting paid as you should. Hello, I'm your host Casino from Casino.com. I'm the Digital Alchemist and today I'll be answering a question from Cynthia. And Cynthia says, Something I would like to see is how to build a brief and charge a customer. I've been freelancing for a while, but I found myself still unsure about this with time by money. Now, for redesigning a large website as a one person, I find it hard to give a flat rate because in reality, I don't know how long it will take me and I don't want to lose out on money. I've been doing per hour, but if a customer is looking for an estimate, I'm sure that they'll want to know how much are they investing in total, not how much they'll have to pay me per hour. So how do you calculate on a brief to a customer your estimate on the cost and what happens if you do more work than what you're charging for? Excellent question. Now, many roads lead to Rome, but I'm just going to share with you my process. Now, before we dive deeper, I just want to make sure that you acknowledge the fact that I am not a lawyer. So I'm just going to give you some advice, but of course you should check with a lawyer if you want to have top-notch advice. Also, if you just want to know about how to price your services in general, then you may want to check my video about pricing your products and services. This video is part of my Be Your Own Boss course that is completely free here on YouTube. So I'll make sure to put the link to that video in the description below. But today I'll be talking specifically about how to estimate larger website projects, making sure you're getting paid and that you don't end up working for free. Before we dive in. Now, before we dive in, just to make things clear, there are many project management methods, but the most common ones will be the waterfall and the agile methods. And if we ask Google about agile versus waterfall project management, it says that both waterfall and agile project management methodologies guide the project team through a successful project. But there are differences between them. The waterfall method is a traditional project management approach that uses sequential phases while Agile methods use iterative work cycles called sprints. Now, for a solo freelancer, there's a good chance that you'll be using the waterfall method most of the time. There are exceptions, of course, but while the Agile methodology is great, it doesn't always work for a one-man or a one-woman company. So, with that out of the way, let's dive in. 1. Work with a specifications document So, first of all, what is a specifications document? Now, specifically for websites, Google tells us that a website specification is a document that articulates the project's goals, objectives, and tactics. It should outline constraints such as budget, deadlines, or technical restraints. But basically, it's a document where you're going to describe the features. Now, it comes in many forms. You can find a lot of examples online. I think it's just best to start with one that you like and then craft your own. That's what I did. But you should really craft your own based to your way of working. So you need to get started somewhere. So just use one example and start building from there. I like to, of course, describe the features, but I like to have wireframes also so that it makes it easier for me to know how many views I'm going to have to create for the whole project. Now, either your client has a specifications document or you can offer it as a service. Yes, I'm talking about a paid service. So at this point, you may be asking me, okay, I'm asking you how to estimate a project and now you're telling me I should create a specifications document, but then how do I estimate the specifications document? Inception, right? Now for this one, I actually go the simple route. I'm just going to quote a number of hours based on the initial discussion. So if someone tells me I want a 100 pages website with this, this and that features, I'm going to try to estimate based on experience also, but I'm just going to quote a finite number of hours. For example, maximum 20 or 30 hours based on my hourly rate. Well, I will create it in those hours, but then if they want additional changes, they might have to purchase additional hours. Most of the time that works because they want to stay on track with the project. So it's just a specifications document. So I've never really seen that time extended actually. What it happened maybe a couple of times, but most of the time it's well within the, the, the project. And of course, like everything, the more you do that kind of things, the more you will know. Now, of course, that does not make sense for smaller projects, but for larger projects, it's impossible to actually quote a large project if you don't have a specifications document. And most clients will understand that. Now, why is it a paid service? Well, because sometimes I've been working like two or three weeks on a specifications document for larger projects. So unless you're a millionaire and you can afford to work for free for three weeks, you will have to get paid for it. 
Now, depending on the size of the project, you may offer a discount to your client if they decide to pursue the project with you. Now, you may think, why do I say that? Of course, they're going to do the project with you, right? Well, not really. I remember once I worked like, I think it was like something like 10 days on a specifications document and the client was very happy. But then they went on working with someone else because it was way cheaper, you know, the type of professional that, you know, discounts everything. And it was so cheap. Then they went with that person to cut a long story short. I heard back from them and eventually they went, they came back working with me. So they kind of paid twice. I think they learned their lesson. Now to cut a long story short, when it's too cheap and too good to be true, usually it's because it is too good to be true. What I want you to understand is that having a specifications document is crucial if you want to estimate the project more precisely. Now, very important, make sure you get a written validation from your client about the specifications document before you create the estimate. Two, treat the specifications document as a sacred book. Now, if you have no experience whatsoever in building websites, maybe you should not take that larger project at this stage. But for the future, what I advise you do is that you create a fictional website and then you write down all the hours. That's going to help you for the future. Now, if you've already built a website, and especially if you track your hours, then it's going to be easier because you're going to estimate based on your experience. So you need to estimate the features. So let's say your client wants a custom built cake pricing calculator. That would be a feature that you would need to estimate. And in some cases, if you've never built one yourself, that would mean research. You can research on forums, on private groups, and also Google is your friend. Also, you need to evaluate the number of views of specific designs that you have to create. So let's say that you need to build a website with 100 pages uh, with cakes, but you only need to create two views because it's going to be a dynamic website, for example. So you have the view with the gallery, I mean, the archive page where you see all the cakes, and then you have the single page layout for each cake. So for that, you're not going to charge like 100 pages. You're going to charge for two designs. And for this, it depends. How long do you take usually to create a design? Is it one hour? Is it 10 hours? Is it two weeks? It's different for everyone. So once again, when you get started, you should really track down your hours. That's really going to help you in the long run. But of course, if you're the one that's going to implement the 100 cakes I just talked about, then one thing you could do is separately you're going to charge the amount of time you need to implement the content. And that means getting the content from the client, uh, cropping the images, optimizing the images, um, proofreading the text, all that kind of stuff. And if you don't know how long it's going to take you, well, that's very easy. Just pretend uh, you're going to insert five cakes. So take any picture, take a chunk of text and see how long it takes you. For some people, it's going to be two minutes per cake. For other people, it's going to be 10. For other people, it's going to be 15 make sure you try like five cakes and then, you know, make an average time that you will need for most cakes. And then always add a little bit more time because we have a tendency to underestimate the time it takes. Now, if you're outsourcing part of the work, well, on top of what the other professionals charge you, you should charge for the project management time that you will have to provide. Three, revisions. In your estimate, make sure that you detail how revisions work. And if you're wondering what revisions are, well, let's say that you hand a prototype to one of your clients and the client's going to write a document with all the changes they need. Well, the revision is going to be the work required for that chunk of change requests. You should absolutely detail what comes with a revision. And in my case, that's going to be scope. For me, the scope of a revision is just minor changes, not new development. Once again, the specifications document is our sacred book. Everything on top of that is subject to a separate quote. Next, the maximum time devoted per revision. So let's say that it's two hours for a smaller website, could be 10 for a larger one, it depends. This is a discussion with the client. I always start with the ideal number, in my opinion, and then sometimes the client will want more or less depending on the project and on how they work and the size of their team. So I always ask the client to start listing the changes they want per order of importance. So the most important at the top of the document. That way I go through uh, the first items on the list. And let's say that it's a three hours revision. Well, I will try to do everything in three hours, but I start at the top of the list. After the three hours of work, if there are more uh, request changes in the document, then it's going to be subject to guess what? A separate quote. Next, I specify the maximum number of revisions. Is it one? Is it two? Three? It's very important. And finally, the extra revisions policy. 
as you may have guessed it, additional revisions that are not in the estimate will be subject to a separate quote. And like I mentioned, actually anything that is not in the validated specifications document will be subject to a separate quote. Now, it may sound harsh, but think about it. Let's say that you want to build a house. So you're going to call a constructor and you're going to settle down on a specific number of rooms, um, bathroom, and so on. So you get a price, you go to the bank, and everything goes smoothly. And just imagine that in the middle of the project, you tell the, um, <laughs> the contractor, um, Actually, I know I paid for three rooms, but now I want 10, and I want 15 bathrooms, and I want a garage uh, for 20 cars. That's not going to work, is it? So it's exactly the same thing when it comes to web design and web development. Four, have a contract. So at this point, you should have a pretty solid estimate document. Now, make sure you formalize all of that in a contract. Once again, I am not a lawyer, but if you want a contract, you should check Chris Hughes' channel. He's got a video actually, and you'll find the link in the description below, where he references a template for a contract. That's his contract. And actually, I've used that, and it's pretty nice, I'm gonna say, very simple. But the next step you should do, you should take that contract, you should change it to uh, your specific situation, and then you should take that contract and go to a lawyer. It's gonna be cheaper that if you went to a lawyer and said, okay, I just want a contract for website design or web development. But if you come already with a contract, you've already worked on it, so you take the template from Chris Hughes, you change it, uh, to your specific needs and then you bring that to a lawyer is going to be way cheaper. Now, I know some people would think, okay, I can just get away with this, but bear in mind that Chris is in Canada. The legislation there is different probably from uh, where you live. And even if you're in Canada, maybe you have a specific situation and you want to make sure that your document is legal. So I can't stress that enough. Take that document and go see a lawyer. Now, once you have your contract, make sure that the number of the contract is referenced in the estimate and vice versa. You also want the number of the estimate in the contract. This way, there's no possible confusion. Five, create a payment plan. So I used to do 50% deposit upfront and 50% at the end of the project. But that's the best way to be in trouble. Instead, you could do 50% deposit upfront, 25% when you release the demo and 25% at the end, or it could be 40, 30, 30, or it could be 40, 20, 20, 20, you get the idea. Now, in my opinion, the best way is to actually match the payment plan to the different milestones of the project. So it could be 40% deposit upfront, 20% when you release the prototype, 20% when you release the demo with the design, and the final 20% when you release the project on the client's hosting and domain name. Now, it's very important that even in the early stages when you discuss with the client, that the client knows that the payments will be due before proceeding to the next milestone. So this way, if someone doesn't want to pay for the next milestone, at least you haven't worked all the hours for nothing. Bonus. Yes, I promised a bonus. Well, that one is easy, but it helped me so much. And it's simple never release a website before the final payment. That's one of the key components of my estimates and my contracts. I will not deliver a website if I don't receive the final payment, at the very least on the day of release. Could be a check, could be a bank transfer. It's important because think about it. If you go to the gas station to <laughs> get gas for your car, well, you pay and then you can ride. Why would it be different for a website project? Now, of course, you could always bend that rule. This is not set in stone, but honestly, most clients understand that and it's no problem whatsoever. So I hope that you got value out of this video. And if you did, please give this video a thumbs up as it really helps growing the channel. Now, if you need help with your WordPress freelancing business, I got tons of videos here on the channel. So make sure you subscribe and hit the notification bell so that you don't miss anything. But if you feel like this is not enough and you want my help personally, then go to casino.com forward slash consulting and select what works best for you. So that's it for this video. I hope to see you in the next one. And in the meantime, don't forget to invest in your success. success.